So I wanted to devote a little time to a video on a very important topic in entrepreneurship, um, one that I have seen devastate really good ideas and really good startup teams. It's the, it's the issue of, of, of equity splits. Who owns what portion of the company? Never forget that when you work in a team, even if it's just sketching ideas over a napkin at a bar, Legally, you are considered to be in a presumptive partnership with whomever that is. So it is important early on to have these conversations about who owns the business and what portion of the business do, does each person own. And this is a really, obviously, as you can imagine, difficult conversation to have. Typically, the way it's done, to, just to get away of the uncomfortability of the get away from the uncomfortability of the conversation, three owners will come together and and they'll say, well, 33% for each one of us, and and we'll call it good. Well, that doesn't reflect the value that each one of the individual owners bring to the business. That doesn't uh, that doesn't take into account the amount of work that they're going to spend in the business. It really is just a, a fixed thing to avoid a conversation at a, at a difficult moment when momentum is high, emotion is high, excitement is high. This is actually the time, though, that you need to tackle this issue. And for a long time, um, it's been something I've struggled with, too, as I've, had, I've been through it myself. I've had, I have multiple student teams each semester before I came up with this or found out about this solution um, in my office you know, uh, concerned, frustrated uh, about this um, because the reality of it is that people bring different value at different times to businesses and we need an equity model that reflects that. So rather than set up a 33, 33, 33% initial split, why not consider a dynamic equity split that reconciles just like you would reconcile your financial statements at the end of every month. So ownership changes, percentage changes at the end of every month. It's a great idea. It's not terribly difficult to implement. And I have to give full credit to somebody named Mike Moyer, who first introduced me to this through a book he wrote called Slicing Pie. If you really want to get in and see some additional examples and conversations about it, I would highly recommend that book, Slicing Pie by Mike Moyer. What I've done is taken his ideas and built a spreadsheet that you each can use. And I would encourage you, from the moment you start conversations with somebody else about any sort of equity in the early stage business, because that's all you have to offer in the early stage. Most of you don't have money to provide salaries. So it's all about equity at that point. It's about potential. When you start with those conversations, Incur understand this dynamic equity split model and encourage and, and quite frankly insist upon it being used by everyone else. And you'll see why as we go through it. The founding principle is fairness. Let's face it, a student is worth less per hour than a seasoned executive who's, who's started and exited multiple non or, uh, entrepreneurial ventures, right? That should be reflected in um, in equity stake, right? Certain times of the business, if you've got a developer developing some software or developing an app, that person, if he's on the founder team, is going to spend a ton of time early in the business for the first six months feeling like he or she is being taken advantage of because they're the only ones doing the work because the rest of you have no product to sell until he or she is done with that product. But yet you don't want to give him or her too much equity so that there's no incentive for you to work on the back end. A dynamic equity split allows the percentage to shift based on work. His, his or her work for the first six months to build the project or the product gives, gives, the, gives more equity. Then over time as it shifts and the marketing person or the CEO per, takes over and starts uh, selling the product and everything, and, and, and the developer's not doing as much work, that equity comes back based on those hours' work. So this is the idea. Let's talk now about some of the key assumptions. Because there's a lot of assumptions in this spreadsheet, and then I'll walk you through. We've got two tabs, a key that sort of tells you these assumptions, and a worksheet um, that we'll go, th we'll go through an example. So first of all, 
How do we determine owner's equity? We determine it by these metrics. The, hour, the hours worked, the hourly wage times the hours worked makes sense. Everyone's going to have different wages based on their experience and what they bring to the table. Hours worked is a timesheet thing, obviously. We're going to overvalue contributions that are uh, that are either equipment, merchandise, uh, uh, you know, materials, things that um, the business needs early on to get going. We're going to overvalue that relative to hours worked at a two times multiplier. So if you're starting a coffee shop, for example, and one of the owners comes with with a coffee maker what you need to start the business and say it costs $10,000, you're going to use a 10 times more or two times multiplier on that 10,000. So it's going to be worth 20,000 equity points. And we're not going to worry about what you call them. It's not a percentage until the end. And we'll call them points throughout the, the rest of this. Um, but the reason we're going to use a multiplier there is because early stage businesses need capital, right? It's incredibly difficult uh, it's incredibly much more difficult for an entrepreneur, uh, for a startup, for a small business to come up with money and equipment. It's much more difficult to come up with that than it is hours worked. So early in the business, we're going to do a two times multiplier for, um, for uh, non-cash contributions and a four times multiplier for cash contributions. So if another founder comes in and gives $10,000, well, that's worth 40,000 equity points. Okay. And then any salaries paid out, this is also important, any salary paid out. So say, for example, your hourly wage and hours, hour, hours worked for each, for, for, for a month, uh, would have yielded 5,000, say it's, you know, so you worked, I don't know, 40 hours a week times four, it's 160 hours times, um, say your hourly wages, let's just make the example easier, $10 an hour, um, that would have been worth 1,600 equity points but we would subtract any portion that you got paid in salary. So the equity points of 1600 if you got paid $600 that month, it doesn't make sense that you would earn equity on the, um, the $600 that you got paid, so your equity points would be 1000 We'll walk through an example to make that more clear. The model also allows for uh, early employees to be brought in and incentivized on lead generation, on attracting new customers. So you can set these up however you want. Uh, percentages based on the first X number uh, of revenue uh, and then some discount after that. How, you know, that's a recommended way to approach it. Contractors. Sometimes you'll see vendors and contractors come in and because you're an early stage business, you can negotiate not to pay them cash but give them a small percentage of equity in the, in the firm. And many will consider doing that because it gives them some upside later if they don't need the cash right now. So there's equity based on hourly rate, hourly wage, um, and a graduated buyout where you have the opportunity to buy out their equity at any point, um, going up to 200% of the total fee that they would have charged. So if you want to buy them out to recapture that equity, uh, you have the opportunity to do so at an inflated fee, which makes sense. Again, fairness because they've delayed payment. Vendors, same thing. A vendor provides you or a facility, say you had a place or a facility, meaning you were a landlord, you had a landlord uh, who offered you free rent for the first six months to get started. Well, um, you could, and that's free, you know, say it was 2000 a month. And for the first six months, that's $18,000 of equity points that you could give to that, um, to that landlord. And then again, with the graduated buyout option, um, either for, you know, it can be time delimited, like for the contractor or throughout the life of it, up to a certain percentage of the original fee. So if it was 18,000 points or $18,000, it would have been 200% of that. Obviously it's $36,000 if you had an equity event later, um, had a ton of money and wanted to pay that out. Finally, advisors, there's an opportunity to put advisors in, um, and anyone else that you might give, uh, equity to at any point during the business. Here's in bold an important point. After the company can afford to pay its way or after there's an equity event, which means you have an investor come in or you sell the company, the dynamic equity model freezes, which means the percentage stay fixed at that time. And then if you were, you know, new ownership group or whatever, or if you were still on the new ownership group, you could, you could restart it after that point. So 
let's go through a model. That's a lot of information, but let's go through a model to show you how this works. All right, so the Greek gods, that's who we're going to use in this example here, they got together, decided to start a company. Artemis, Athena, Hades, and Dionysus. Anything remember in my spreadsheets, in blue or green, actually in this case, um, can be can be manipulated. The only ones you want to leave alone are anything in black because those are calculations, okay? So, first set is a timesheet. How many hours are folks working? So I've preloaded this. Artemis doesn't work for the first three months, but she puts 200 hours in a month. These are hours worked, 200 hours for the rest of the year. Athena hits it early for the first eight months and then drops off the rest of the year. Hades, similar to Athena, kind of hits it hard first, drops down a little bit because he's got to go back to the underworld in the, in, in the summer, uh, then comes back. And then Dionysus works the first month to help it get going and doesn't work at all for the rest of the year. Now, because on, because the timesheet, the hours worked are only part of it, then we need to assign wages to each one. Uh, let's say this is a, an event planning business or something like that, and uh, they have different values based on <clears throat> what they, you know, what they bring to the table in this business. Artemis, we're going to pay her ten. We say she's worth ten dollars an hour. She's the goddess of the hunt, right? So she brings a little meat, and you know, she she works she works for that. Athena. Uh, the glowing city on the hill, she, she's worth $12 an hour. Hades brings in the Undertaker and that sort of fun stuff. And Dionysus as well. I mean, that's the god of parties. So, of course, he's worth the most. Um, so we take their wage by their hours worked, and we get each month to an equity point number, right? So in the first month, there were 9,400 points that were earned. Artemis, since she didn't work, she earned zero of them. Athena worked 2,400, 200 times her wage amount of $12. Hades, 3,000, 200 times his wage amount of 15. Dionysus, 4,000, uh, 200 times his wage amount of 20. So you can see Dionysus, for example, earned 4,000 points and nothing for the rest of that year. Now, here's where we want to get to the inflators. Let's say that Artemis, and the reason it's in green is because it's something you need to calculate, Artemis gave four thousand, or sorry, excuse me, one thousand dollars to the company that first month. That is worth more than the hours that people are working. It's worth a four times multiplier that we decided. So we take that times four. And that gives her an extra four thousand. So she didn't earn any in in wages, but she earned a bunch in her contribution in month one. Let's just go through month one, and then we'll walk through non cash. Nobody put anything in. There was a vendor that they needed. Say they had an event planner or something. They, they needed to come and do something. They couldn't pay with cash, so they gave the event planner uh, $1,000 worth of the event planner service at a two times multiplier. They gave them the event planner 2,000 equity points. Hopefully this isn't sounding too complicated. It comes together pretty easily. Then this area here, this just adds them all up. So you can see here, I'll even highlight the cells. The wage calculation plus the cash contribution plus the non-cash contribution, Artemis only had that $4,000. Same with Athena. The wage calculation, the cash contribution, the non-cash contribution, she just got what she worked that month, the $2,400 and on down. Based on this, and you've got your vendor there too, we have a total that month of 15,400 equity points. Then we divide that up, we take the, the weighted average for each. At the end of month one, because Artemis put in the most, Artis, Artemis and Dionysus put in the most points, they own 26% of the company at that moment in time. If we were to have an equity event, if we were to sell the company or get an investor at that moment in time, that's how we would split the proceeds. 25%, 26% to Artemis, 15 to Athena, 19 to Hades, 26 there, and 13% to the vendor. But we know that most businesses don't just start and end in one month or have an equity event in one month. So we go through the rest of the year. And we've got the timesheets filled out, so we understand the wage calculations. Nobody else put cash in this business the whole rest of the year. Athena, though, gave some equipment on, in month five, and so did Dionysus, a lot of it, in month seven. The vendor put in $2,000. We also brought in an advisor. Let's say we brought in Zeus. 
um, and and gave him a little bit, and then hired hired Mercury to go uh, give invitations out, and and gave uh, and gave him a portion too. So as you can see, all of this gets calculated every month, and here's what's happening every month. So this 15, 4, now we're 20. These get changed based on who con who contributed and who put in the work. So whereas Artemis owned 26% of the company after the end of month one, she only not owned 19% after the end of month and end of month two. Why? Because Hades, look what he did. Uh, he worked, a, she didn't work at all. He worked the most of anyone in that company that, that month. So his percentage jumped up. Uh, excuse me, right here it is, jumped up. Athena's did as well, and those folks who did not work dropped down accordingly, right? And the vendor you see too has dropped in a percentage of ownership. Now remember with vendors, advisors, employees, we have that, well, especially vendors anyway, we have the opportunity to pay them out at a percent, so we could always pay an inflator on this, on this, we set up to 200% on this $2,000. We could always pay this vendor off 4,000 or uh, yeah, 4,000 bucks and then have them leave or no, I'm sorry. I guess it's it's a $1,000. So we could pay them this $2,000. The inflator's already built in. Excuse me. We could pay them this 2,000 bucks and they would have no percentage. Over the course of a year, though, you can see what happens when the vendor makes that one time contribution, right? And nothing for the rest of the year. That percentage goes from really high in month one down to less than 2% by the end of the year. So let's say this business carried forward for the entire year. Timesheets, one cash contribution, a little bit of non-cash contribution, some non-owner stuff. All of it gets calculated. And let's say at the end of the year, they have an equity event. A investor comes in and says, I will give you $500,000 for 20% of the company. The clock stops the the dynamic equity um, spreadsheet halts, it fixes, and now we look at the percentages. Artemis owns 21%, Athena 20, just over 20%, Hades 30%, Dionysus 23%, the vendor almost two, the advisor and the employee rounded out. Now, because we have a 500,000 investment for 20% uh, of the company, that gives us a, a value of the company the equity event that happened valued the company at $2.5 million. So we've got $2.5 million of value to give out to those who own it. 20% of it goes to the venture capital firm, right? They just bought their 20% for $500,000, which then leaves 80% to be uh, 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 distributed amongst the people who still have equity. This is the capitalization table at the end of, we talked about that in the entrepreneurial finance model, this is the capitalization table at the moment of the equity event. So while this represents 100% of the equity, we take out the 20% that the venture capital firm bought, it leaves Artemis with almost 17%. Her stake then is worth, at that point in time, $423,000. 605 for Hades, you can see on down what people owe out of the two million, because remember the investment of 500 um, took 20%. So this is the point, this is the beauty of the dynamic equity spreadsheet. It's simple, once you get the hang of it, and really all you're inputting is hours worked, these wage calculations, and any cash or non-cash, whoops, excuse me, this thing tends to do that a little sometimes. Um, and any cash or non-cash contributions that happen at any point during um, during the year, right? So again, timesheet, cash, non-cash, non-owner stuff. Everything else calculates for you. The spreadsheet reconciles at the end of every month. You can see what everybody's equity is at the end of every single month. You can know what your percentage of ownership is. You can make strategic decisions about when and how to bring somebody else on based on what that will look like to these ownership percentages. A really powerful tool, a really simple tool. I want to encourage each of you, I'm going to put this model out there, I'm going to leave it as is. I want to encourage you to play with it. I'm going to encourage you to use it and ask me any questions you might have.